fellow Guyanese, we would all have had the privilege just yesterday of a detailed and authoritative presentation by His Excellency the President of our Cooperative Republic on the very pressing issues and challenges that are being faced by the electricity sector expect and deserve. Let me say at the very onset that President Ali and our government have always been very clear about the fact that we consider the deterioration in uh, service at GPL over the years to be unacceptable and we share and empathize fully with the displeasure and dissatisfaction of the Guyanese citizenry at, the, at every single instance of blackout, of power interruption or of power fluctuation. We share that pain and we agree fully that every single Guyanese family, every single Guyanese household, and every single Guyanese company is perfectly in order to expect a reliable, uninterrupted, and affordable supply of power. I want to be very clear about that at the onset. One would have thought that given President Ali's detailed presentation yesterday that the misrepresentations that we've seen coming from the usual spokespersons on the opposition side of the political spectrum that those misrepresentations would have been put to rest because like I said earlier His Excellency was expansive he covered comprehensively the sector and he was authoritative in terms of the, act, the concrete actions that we're taking. Regrettably, notwithstanding the fact that President Ali took the time to make the presentation that he did yesterday, we have continued to witness the customary misrepresentations and in many cases, very blatant factual misrepresentations in relation to the sector. And I want to refer particularly to two things. One, I saw an editorial in uh, uh, one newspaper this morning that tries to make the assertion that the blackout situation is somehow worse post-2020 relative to what it was between 2015 and 2020. First of all, that is not factually accurate, but notwithstanding the fact that it is not factually accurate, like I said earlier, we understand that every single instance is black, in, uh, every single instance of blackwood causes impatience. And I want to address in a very frontal manner why whatever service AP and UAFC was able to deliver through GPL during 2015 to 2020, I want to speak about why they were able to do so. And I want to speak about why we are now facing the challenges that we are facing today. So, like I said, we saw continued misrepresentations, both in one newspaper in their editorial this morning. And I understand that there was also the continued APNU uh, uh, AFC uh, misrepresentation of the facts on uh, one of their uh, social media platforms last evening. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So, let us start from this uh, argument that is being made that during 2015 to 2020 APNU AFC GPL delivered what is now being characterized as a better quality service. Let us for the time being set aside the fact that that is not factually accurate. And let us just say whatever quality of service was delivered by APNU AFC during 2015 to 2020 let us speak. I wish this morning to speak a little bit about why the GPL was able to deliver power in the manner that they did from 2015 to 2020. For us to understand that, we have to go back a few years. We have known as a country for a very long time 
that GPL has had challenges with adequate electricity generation, reliability of that electricity generation, affordability, of course, the cost of producing the electricity, and, of course, the reliability of its transmission and distribution network. We've known that as a country for a very long time. Prior to the People's Progressive Party demitting office in 2015, we had made a succession of significant investments in the electricity sector, and I want to speak about some of them so that we understand what AP and UAFC inherited when they came into office to be able to deliver the power that they delivered uh, through GPL. I'm only going to go back, I'm not going to go back 20 years. I'm only going to go back to say, to less than a decade. I'm only going to go back to say, starting from perhaps 2008, so that I'll speak about the major investments that the People's Progressive Party government made in electricity from 2008 to 2015 when we demitted office. In 2008, we invested in brand new Wartzilla generating capability at Skeldon, totaling 10 megawatts. So in 2008, we, we installed 10 megawatts worth of Wartzilla engines at Skeldon. In 2009, we installed at Kingston three 6.9 megawatts of brand new Wartzilla engines. That gave us brand new generating capability of 20.7 megawatts at Kingston. In 2011, we brought online an additional two 7.8 megawatts of generating capability at Kingston. That gave us an additional 15.6 megawatts of generating capacity at Kingston. In 2014, we installed 26.1 megawatts of generating capability at Vredenhoop. So that gave us an additional 26.1 megawatts of power. In addition, we brought 24-hour electricity for the first time in 2014 to Leguan and Wakenham with significant investments in those two islands. Prior to that, those two islands only used to get um, 12 hours of electricity every year. In 2014, we, we introduced 24-hour power and we installed about one and a half megawatts of power in Wakenham. If we take only those investments, if we take only the 10 megawatts at Skeldon in, 20, in 2008, the 20.7 megawatts of power in Kingston in 2009, the 15.7 megawatts that were installed in Kingston in 2011, the 26.1 megawatts that were installed in Vredenhoop in 2014, and the roughly more or less 1.5 megawatts uh, that were installed in Leguan and Wakenham, you will get almost 74 73.9 or thereabouts megawatts of new generating capability that was installed in GPL between the 2008 and 2014 period. Additionally, we were acquiring several smaller Caterpillar sets that we were, uh, in order to ensure that GPL was able to meet short-term fluctuations in, the, in demand and, of course, its, un, its underlying growth in demand. So let us say that we estimate in total those amounted to, say, perhaps about three megawatts. It probably was more. But you're looking at when, by the time we demitted office, let's say more or less three megawatts of additional CAT sets. We're looking at by the time we demitted office in 2015, we left GPL with new generating capability, firm power being generated by brand new engines, engines that were acquired as brand new engines between 2008 and 2014. We left GPL in 2015 with 76.9 megawatts of new firm power generating capacity. We then demitted office and we, we, we were installing, we installed, so let us say this is 76 megawatts of uh, new power. We installed the 76 megawatts of power because we anticipated, we knew there were new investments coming into Guyana. The economy was growing. There were new housing schemes being developed. New, uh, new uh, applicants were connecting uh, their houses. There was growth in demand. 
So we knew there was going to be a growth in demand. We knew that the uh, GPL generating um, engines were, many of them were old, that we needed to retire some of the older engines, and we need to also build up capacity to address issues of redundancy, have adequate spinning reserves, etc. So I want to emphasize that in the midst of all of this debate about GPL delivering power reliably during 2015 to 2020, I want to say very clearly that when the APNU AFC came into office in 2015, they met a GPL that had 76 megawatts of power, 76.9 megawatts or more of new firm power capacity delivered as a result of the People's Progressive Party installing new, brand new engines, Wartzilla and other engines, brand new engines between the period of 2008 to 2015. Putting aside or on top of that, all of the investments that we would have made in transmission and distribution and putting aside, of course, additional interventions that we were doing in uh, renewable energy, including the installation of turbines that had a capacity of, uh, I believe, up to 30 megawatts of um, bagasse fired uh, electricity generation at Skeldon. Of course, we know the APNU came and shut down the sugar industry, making it impossible for those turbines to generate power. Had those turbines been brought online with their full capacity, they would have added additional generating uh, capability. So. Then in 2015, we demitted office and the APNU AFC came into government and they spent from 2015 to 2020 in government and I'm not going to get into the illegality of their extended stay in government today. But let us examine what they installed in the electricity sector from May 2015 when they assumed office to August 2020 when they demitted office. They installed in 2018 5.4 megawatts at Anna Regina. They installed in 2018 also about 3.3 megawatts in Bartica. And they installed at Cane Field 5.5 megawatts. 5.4 megawatts at Anna Regina, 3.3 megawatts at Bartica, and 5.5 megawatts at Cane Field, taken together. 14.2 megawatts, 14.2 megawatts in five years. Mind you, I just outlined that we had installed 76.9 megawatts from 2008 to 2014. In the five years that APNU stayed in government, they installed the grand total of 14.2 megawatts. They also acquired, I should add, in fairness, I should add that they did also uh, procure some CAT sets, I believe uh, uh, perhaps, uh, my, my, re my information tells me that perhaps about two CAT sets of 1.6 megawatts capacity in total. So let's say that's 3.2 megawatts. If we add that to the 14.2, you have a total uh, generating capability of 17.4 megawatts installed by APNU during their five years in office. If you focus only on the Demrar and Barbies interconnected system, which is the main national grid, the DBIS, they only installed the 5.5 at Cane Field and the 3.2, which were installed at Anvawak. This is the CAT sets. So on the DBIS in five years, the APNU AFC government only installed 8.7 megawatts. They only installed 8.7 megawatts in the five years that they spent in office on the DBIS. In contrast with our 73 megawatts, Skeldon, Skeldon, Kingston, and Friedenhoop. Our 70, let us say about 70 megawatts. We installed in excess of 70 megawatts in the DBIS from 28, 2008 to 2014, the People's Progressive Party installed more than 70 megawatts of power into the DBIS. Between 2008 to 2014, APNU installed 8.7 megawatts into the DBIS between 2015 to 2020. 
since we returned to office in 2020. Recognizing, not to mention, of course, during the five years, the complete abandonment, abandonment of maintenance, etc. So they inherited more than 70 megawatts of brand new generating capability to help them to meet the demand at the time. They utilize those engines in the customary manner that they mismanage every other sector. They also mismanage the electricity sector. So they installed a paltry 8.7 megawatts of uh, generating capability into the DBIS, did not invest in new generating capability, did not invest and maintain our engines adequately. And so when we returned to office in 2020, what we found was a completely de uh, uh, um, dilapidated and even further dilapidated infrastructure at GPL um, with a system that was completely incapable of generating electricity to meet the needs of the, of, of, of the country. In December 2020, having been in office for just a few months, President Ali instructed that we acquire emergency power. And we acquired six CAT sets, six times 1.6 megawatt CAT sets. We installed 9.6 megawatts of emergency power at Canefield, Envoac, and Sophia. That took us, that, those 9.6, we installed in a mere four months of assuming office. 9.6 megawatts of emergency power. They took five years to install 8.7 megawatts of power. In a mere four months, President Ali instructed that emergency power be acquired and we installed 9.6 megawatts at Canefield, Envoac, and Sophia. We, we, notwithstanding their, uh, their uh, public pronouncements to the contrary, they did not install 46.5 megawatts of power. You would have seen pronouncements being made trying to insinuate that they installed new, new power of 46.5 megawatts. They only scrambled when they lost the no confidence motion, recognizing that the electricity sector was in total collapse, recognizing that they were about to be booted out of office. They scrambled to procure 46.5 megawatts of Wartzel engines, which way they were not even able to get shipped out of Finland. When we came into office, those engines were still sitting in Finland. We instructed immediately that the engines be shipped. The engines were still sitting in Finland. We instructed that the engines be shipped immediately and that they be installed forthwith. As a result of which in 2021, we have installed, we installed the 46.5 megawatts at Garden of Eden, which they were incapable of delivering. I'm not going to deal with the fact that they illegally drew out of money from the Consolidated Fund to pay for this when they were facing the prospect of being booted out of office. That I'm going to deal with on another occasion. <coughs> so the People's Progressive Party installed 9.6 megawatts of emergency power in December 2020. In 2021, we installed 46.5 megawatts, uh, the 46.5 megawatts at uh, Garden of Eden. We procured an additional 28.9 megawatts of capacity of Hyundai engines. Those are now being brought online at Columbia. As of today, 19.2 megawatts are online. And we anticipate that once all of those engines are brought online, we'll be getting 28.9 megawatts of capacity from, um, from, 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 uh, from Columbia. We also installed a further six megawatts of generating capability that were previously at Troy Resources. So the 9.6 megawatts, of emergency power, the 46.5 megawatts that were installed at Garden of Eden, the 28.9 megawatts that were installed at Columbia, the 6 megawatts that were installed at Envoac, in total give us 91 megawatts of power that we have installed since we returned to office. In addition, this week we have been in negotiations and we are concluding arrangements, and those arrangements are announced. His Excellency announced them yesterday. They are widely reported in the newspapers today. To acquire an additional 36 megawatts from a power ship. If you add those 36 megawatts to the items that I've listed above, once those 36 megawatts are brought online, which we anticipate to happen within the next three weeks, the People's Progressive Party would 
have installed 127 megawatts in the four years that we've been in office we would have installed 127 megawatts of firm power onto the network now on top of that it would be remiss of me not to mention that we would have had another 165 megawatts of power from Amila, currently supplying the network had the very APNU AFC not derailed Amila. Right now, today, our national grid would have been getting another 165 megawatts of power. Not only did they derail Amila using their one seat majority during the 2011 to 2015 period, not only did they derail Amila, but they also failed to offer an alternative. So having derailed Amila, and having come into office in 2015, where is the alternative that the AP and UAFC offer to address the reality that demand is growing? Where is the alternative? They spent five years in office and installed barely eight megawatts, just over eight megawatts of power to the DBIs. Where is the Amila alternative that AP and UAFC is offering or uh, was offering and would have delivered to the people of Guyana? Not only would we have brought a miler on stream but we said publicly we would have harnessed our gas resources and we have we have taken concrete steps right now since we came back into government to harness those gas resources and to build out an additional 300 megawatts an additional 300 megawatts under the gas to energy project now why are these all of these facts relevant these facts are relevant because there are certain realities that we have to face First of all, a lot of GPL's generating capability, we all acknowledge, is old. It has been inherited from decades ago. The reality is our economy has been growing even before oil. During the pre-2015 People's Progressive Party government, we had laid the foundation for rapid growth in the economy. We had sustained economic growth over several years. We navigated very challenging economic and political periods in our country's history and we continue to grow recognizing the reality that the economy would grow we were investing in generating capability to meet the immediate needs as well as for the long-term needs now let us speak about some of the realities in relation to growth in demand <coughs> in 2014 gpl had 177,780 customers. Today, well, in, at the end of 2023, so remember that number, 177,780,000 at the end of 2014. At the end of 2023, GPL had 227,067 customers. So you had growth from 177,000 to 227,000. My dear Guyanese brothers and sisters, that is during that period from 2014 to 2023, those numbers indicate that GPL added more than 49,000, more than 49 thousand new customers almost 50,000 new customers from 2014 to 2023 end of 2023 but in addition to the fact that more than 49,000 cost new customers were brought on the grid in addition to that fact you have to look at the nature of the customers and the nature of the demand some of those customers are new households because of the housing program and the new housing schemes that we've been developing but a lot of those customers are also industrial and commercial users because of the, what's happening in the economy in relation to increased uh, commercial and industrial activity. So let us look at, as what, at what, what has happened to, to demand, gross. So demand as indicated by, I'm going to share with you two, num two statistics or two indicators. Gross generation. In 2014, or let's look at between 2014 to 2020. From 20, grew by 166,000 megawatt hours. 
Let us look at 2020 to 2023. From 2020 to 2023, GPL's gross generation grew from 876,830 to 1,179,899 megawatt hours. In other words, from 2020 to 2023, GPL's gross generation grew by 303,000 megawatt hours. So what you have there is during the AP New Year's growth of 166, during the AP New Year's from 2014 to 2020, growth in gross generation from, by 166,000 megawatt hours. In the three years that we have assumed office from 2020 to 2023, growth in gross generation of GPL by 303,000 megawatt hours. Peak demand in 2020 was 126.4 megawatts. Peak demand today is 184 megawatts, from 126.4 megawatts to 184 megawatts. That's the reality. The reality is there are more customers and they are demanding more. Your household cost, uh, consumers have more electrical appliances, more people have refrigerators and freezers in their homes, more people have air conditioning, fans and air conditioning in their homes, more people have tele uh, more televisions and uh, computers and other um, IT related devices, more people have more electronic devices that require charging. That's the reality of Guyanese, how more, more, more people have all sorts of electrical appliances in their homes. That is the reality of Guyana of today. And so demand has grown tremendously. And we knew this would happen at the household level. We have been distributing house lots. People have been building homes. They are demanding more. So you have more households and you have more demand in each household. And on the commercial and industrial side, you have more investors, you have more investment, you have more businesses. Many of them are energy intensive. So on the commercial and industrial side, there's more, more demand. That's the reality, and that's a reality that didn't creep up as a surprise on us. It's a reality that we knew was going to happen. And as I indicated earlier, prior to 2015, we recognized that that demand was going to happen. Hence, our investment in more than 70 megawatts of new power. APNU must have known that that growth in demand was going to happen. But during their five years, they only installed 8.7 megawatts in the DBIS. Those are the facts. Now I saw somebody brought to my attention a flyer. I think it was posted on the same um, uh, uh, social media platform. I believe it's called Credible, uh, oddly, ironically, it's called Credible Sources. And this flyer is circulated in this green and yellow. Power, the usual green and yellow, of course. Power highlights under APNU AFC. I'm, I'm not going to deal with all of the bullets. I'm just going to deal with a couple, the first two. Let's just take the first two. Power highlights under AP and UAFC with a CS logo, which I believe means credible sources, credible sources according to the AFC, AP, AP and U. The first bullet says, power highlight, well, the heading is power highlights under APNU AFC. <coughs> the first bullet says, New 26 megawatt generating plant of at Vreden Hoop as a power highlight on the APNU. I want to read from the Kaichor News of February 10th, 2015, a story headlined GPL Commission's 26. G, sorry, let remember the date. 10th of February 2015, it would be recalled that the 2015 elections took place in May. In February 2015, GPL installs 36 million US dollar power station. And the story, there are several pictures with President Donald Ramatar, Prime Minister Samuel Hines, Minister Robson Ben. I see myself in the picture so I had clearly the privilege of attending this commissioning event too. Guyana Power and Light yesterday commissioned the company's largest and most modern electricity generating plant at Vreden Hoop West Coast Demerara. The 36, megawatt, the 36 million US dollar power plant were two years in construction. So we started construction in 2013 
We started, in fact, the procurement activities going back since about 2012. We started the planning long before that. Construction started since 2013. We commissioned in February 2015. We completed construction towards the end of 2014, did testing, etc. We brought online. This is an additional, this is an additional, this new power plant will generate 26 megawatts of electricity that can power the whole of West Demerara, parts of Georgetown and reach areas as far as Borbis. I'm merely quoting from the Kaicho News article of February 10, 2015. Vredenhoop Power Station brought online. Com construction commenced in 2013, completed in 2014, commissioned by the People's Progressive Party in February 2015 after two years of construction activities and after four years or five years of planning. And today, the AFC's credible sources has the audacity to publish a, 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 a graphic that says power highlights on the APNU AFC, new 26 megawatts generating plant at Vredenhoop. And I have to say, yet another barefaced up new AFC lie. Second bullet says power utility upgrade program. Well, I thought my memory was failing me because, and I will read from another Kaichou News article, I'm seeing a photograph of myself here with the then president of the Inter-American Development Bank, President Luis Alberto Moreno. In October 2014, Kaichur News, October 11, 2014, Kaichur News reported, US $96 million secured to reduce electricity losses and improved 24-hour supply, water supply. Uh, water supply. And it goes on to say, Minister of Finance Dr. Ashni Singh signed two project agreements in Washington, D.C. with the Inter-American Development Bank and the European Union yesterday. The agreements mobilized a total of 96 million U.S. dollars of development financing to benefit the electricity and water uh, sectors of Guyana. These, uh, etc. So I'm not going to read the whole, uh, the whole article. I, well, let me skip forward. Under the first agreement, $64.6 million will be provided to finance a power utility upgrade program under which GPL's efficiency and reliability will be enhanced through electricity loss reduction measures, improvements in the operational capabilities, and strengthening the management and corporate performance of the utility. People's Progressive Party Civic Government signing with the IDB a power utility upgrade program that the APNU AFC now lists. So the first two, I, like I said, I'm going to stop there. I can go on, they talk about leg one. We are the ones who deliver 24 hours power to leg one. I'm going to stop there. But it is the, people's pro it is the previous People's Progressive Party civic government that delivered the 73.9 megawatts of brand new power generating capability that APNU came into office in 2015 and met. And I want to repeat that for emphasis. It is the previous People's Progressive Party government that delivered 73.9 megawatts of brand new generating capability that APNU came into office and met, including the Kingston Power Station. That they, that not the Kingston Power Station, including several new engines at Kingston, but it also including a brand new 26 megawatt power station at Vreden Hoop that the AP and UAFC now wants to claim that they delivered for the people of Guyana. It is the People's Progressive Party that delivered the 46.5 megawatts of power that APNU paid for and could not, because of their incompetence, could not deliver. It is the People's Progressive Party that delivered that 46.5 megawatts of power at Garden of Eden. It's the People's Progressive Party that delivered nine, its President Irfan Ali and the People's Progressive Party government that delivered emergency power within four months of assuming office, 9.6 megawatts of emergency power at Cainfield on Vawakton Sophia. It's the People's Progressive Party that built 
that installed at built and installed at Columbia, the 28.9 megawatts, 19.2 megawatts of which are online right now. And it's the People's Progressive Party government that is concluding that has, uh, has concluded an arrangement to deliver another 36 megawatts of power under the power ship, uh, from the power under the power ship arrangement that will be plugged into Barbies. It's the People's Progressive Party that conceptualized and developed a Mile of Falls hydropower project. It's the People's Progressive Party that has developed the gas to energy project that will deliver another 300 megawatts of power. And it is APNU AFC who delivered in five years in government a paltry, a meager 8.7 megawatts of power to the DBIS and another five megawatts or so, another eight megawatts or so scattered elsewhere. I want to repeat that. They spent five years in office and they delivered a meager 8.7 megawatts into the DBIS, apart from neglecting the system and not maintaining it. Now, I want to say this. This government, led by His Excellency President Irfan Ali, really has no interest in playing the blame game. This is not about searching to see who to blame. Our focus is on delivering solutions. And I've listed several of the immediate term solutions that we have already been delivering. And I've listed the bigger projects that will deliver medium and longer term solutions. The People's Progressive Party government, led by President Ali, is focusing our energies on delivering solutions. But let me say this, that we will not allow the APNU AFC to misrepresent the facts on this matter. I have not previously spoken on this matter, apart from a press release that I issued two, a couple of days ago and the current statement today. I've not previously sought to cast blame to say the AP and UAFC uh, 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 abandoned the electricity sector and left it in the current state. Because our interest is not in assigning blame. But if the APNU AFC is going to go out there and try to misrepresent the facts to rewrite history, I can assure you that we will not sit down silently and allow this to happen. We will respond and we will set out the facts as unequivocal as they are. These things are documented. They're documented. You can you, you Google, anybody can Google them. They're documented. While we are not interested in playing any blame game or engaging in any blame game, we will not sit down silently and allow the AP and UAFC to dishonestly misrepresent the facts in relation to this matter and try to rewrite history. Because the recent history in relation to the power sector is very clear. They came into office with nearly, including the power ship, we'll see 100 in, within, within three to four weeks, we will have installed 127 megawatts of farm power into the network. I didn't mention, of course, what we're doing on the solar side, the additional 33 megawatts of solar uh, power that we'll be plugging into the network. That's money that we had earned under the LCDS. They left that money, parked it, didn't utilize it. We came back. We are, we are now procuring and installing 33 megawatts of solar power to be plugged into Barbies to be installed in Barbies, Essequibo, and, uh, and in, in, in Linden. So my message, my dear Guyanese brothers and sisters, is simply uh, to elaborate and to build on the foundation that, uh, that His Excellency the President laid yesterday. And in particular, to express my grave disappointment that notwithstanding President Ali's exhaustive articulation of the realities facing the sector yesterday and notwithstanding his detailed articulation of what we're doing to address the sector and the challenges that the sector is facing the AP and UAFC and its surrogates and its agents notwithstanding President Ali's factual and detailed presentation yesterday the AP and UAFC and their surrogates and agents continue to try 
to rewrite the history of the sector. And I want to say unequivocally that this People's Progressive Party government, under the leadership of President Irfan Ali, will not allow the APNU AFC to rewrite their sordid history. The sordid history of mismanagement in the electricity sector that is mirrored by their sordid misgovernance and mismanagement of this country throughout the entire five years that they stayed in office, at least two of which were illegally so. We will not allow the APNU AFC to rewrite history and to misrepresent the facts because they are squarely responsible for the current state of affairs that we are in. And I will hasten to add and assure the Guyanese people, we share your pain. We are of the position, President Ali, I know that I speak for my president when I say this, and I know this because I see firsthand the anguish that the president feels and experiences every time there's a blackout. I see and I hear my president expressing his impatience and his anger that we are in this situation today. And I see the efforts that he makes throughout the day and the night to find solutions. I receive phone calls in the middle of the night, and I'm not alone in that regard, members of the cabinet. In the middle of the night, discussions are convened on the nature of the problem and solutions that we have to confront them. I want to say to the Guyanese people that I have witnessed, I have had the privilege of witnessing firsthand, my president and your president, and the anguish that he feels every time there's a blackout. We are a very accessible government. Unlike the APNU AFC where you couldn't meet a president or a minister or couldn't get access to them. We are a very accessible government. President Ali hears every day the anguish of the Guyanese people in relation to the blackout situation and we find it unacceptable. We find it unacceptable. I want to say that to you. And our energies really are focused on delivering solutions I want to emphasize, I don't wish to be spending an hour of my time answering AP and UAFC lies. This is a waste of my time, frankly speaking. But I'm not going to allow the AP and I and no member of the People's Progressive Party government will allow the AP and UAFC to tell their lies and get away with it. We want to focus our energies on delivering solutions. And that is what we, we should be doing. That is what we are doing. And apart from the moments that we take to respond to and to debunk their lies, our energies are focused firmly on delivering solutions so that in the short term, the Guyanese people will experience a better quality service. And I'm pleased to say that within three weeks, an additional 36 megawatts of power will be installed via the power ship. I'm pleased to say that work continues so that by 2025, an additional 300 megawatts of power will be delivered um, from the gas to energy project. I'm pleased to say to you that we are also at a very advanced stage of evaluating proposals for another 165 megawatts of power under Amaila. I'm pleased to tell you that another 33 megawatts of power um, uh, that is uh, based on solar panels will be delivered in Barbies, Essequibo and Demerara, uh, Barbies, Essequibo and Linden. And of course, we're working on multiple other solutions. So thank you very much. My dear Guyanese brothers and sisters, for taking the time to listen to me uh, today. I really appreciate that all those of you who would have tuned in and would have taken the time to listen to us. Like I said, your government, led by your president, President Irfan Ali, we are committed to resolving this matter, not only for the immediate term today and tomorrow, but for the longer term as well. Thank you very much.